Nuit Blanche is an all-night art festival that happens every year in cities around the world. In Winnipeg, it's held in the Exchange District downtown. There are also a few art installations at the Forks, which is where Winnipeg's two rivers meet, and probably the biggest tourist attraction in the city. I've gone to Nuit Blanche with my partner and friends in past years, but this year I went by myself, and I had a really nice time. Sometimes doing stuff by yourself is the absolute best. There's a dedicated signal for bikes here, which is great, but this one has a nonsensical design. The bike signal is made not to conflict with cars turning left from the opposite direction, but cars turning left are still allowed to conflict with pedestrians, meaning the light turns red for bikes while the walk signal is still on. Traffic signals can definitely be smarter than this. Like most urban bike lanes in Winnipeg, this one is marred by driveways every few meters. But it's not bad. I feel much safer and more comfortable having a separated lane. There's some kind of maintenance being done here, and I'm pleased to see that an alternative is provided for bikes. Here we are at the heart of the festival. This reminded me a lot of Shibuya in Tokyo. Huge crowds of people everywhere mixed with drivers trying to move through them. The car infestation is never more evident than when tons of people are out walking. You can see how dysfunctional and chaotic this is. It obviously makes sense to cross here, but there's no crosswalk. Excuse me, sorry. It's particularly scary because drivers end up having to wait a long time for people to cross and they start getting impatient and behaving impulsively. This is Old Market Square. The car dealership signature. Trippy dude. There are so many people out walking that there isn't enough space for everyone, since most of every street is devoted to car rather than pedestrian infrastructure. So naturally, you see people spilling into the bike lane and stream. I can't tell you how many Instagram pages there are about drivers parked in the bike lane. And no, they're not turning left. I think they meant to put their park anywhere flashers on. This is Portage Avenue and Main Street, the most trafficked intersection in the city, and it's accessible only by car, totally emblematic of pedestrian hostile urban design. Pedestrians have to use a big circuitous underground, which has a mall and connects a bunch of buildings downtown. The underground network is actually a pretty cool space, but obviously far less convenient and accessible than just, you know, crossing the street. This intersection has inconvenienced me countless times, especially when I'm biking. This is the entrance to the underground here. There's no elevator here. Winnipeg's public transit is very well used. I take the bus hundreds of times each year, and I rarely see a bus less than half full. A more common problem is the bus or stations being over capacity. Transit is definitely underfunded and has a financial model heavily dependent on fares. These cute fairy lights hang over a giant parking lot right smack in the middle of downtown. I can hardly imagine a worse use of the space, or a better place for a park, a plaza, or literally anything else. This was way, way too loud. Like hearing damage within minutes loud. I turned down the volume for you. Now I'm leaving the exchange and heading over to the Forks, which is very close to downtown. Cool parking lot, bro. 
This is the Union Station parking lot. Union Station is a nice building, but it's not particularly well used since there are only two passenger trains per week here. Here we are at the Forks. It's not a great first impression. Just in this 10 second clip, you can see multiple conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians. Check out all this cool stuff. This is part of Ai Weiwei's Forever Bicycles series. Ai Weiwei is a political dissident from China who has criticized the Chinese government's authoritarianism through his art. The Chinese government detained and imprisoned him without charge for 81 days in 2011. My interpretation is that this piece is a reflection on living closely together in dense urban spaces. This installation by Geronimo Inutic is called Ikuma. The Esplanade Riel is a pedestrian bridge named after Louis Riel, one of the most important and revered Métis leaders in Canadian and Manitoban history. He led a rebellion against the Canadian government before Manitoba was a province, and was later executed by the government of Canada for treason. I see these two bridges as a metaphor. This installation by Sputnik Architecture was my favorite of the night. Parts of this path by the Assiniboine River are very dark at night. I would understand people feeling uncomfortable walking or riding here at night between the lack of lighting and the fact that you're kind of trapped between the river and a steep river bank. It's hard to see, but there's a statue of Louis Riel here at the Manitoba Legislature. This is the Osborne Street Bridge, which I live about a block from. The city has put up signs here saying that cycling on the sidewalk isn't permitted. But the bike lane here is only on the bridge. It ends as soon as you get off the bridge at either end, meaning it's practically useless. I'd actually say it's worse than useless, since it forces you to merge with cars moving at highway speeds at either end. The world's shortest bike lane here isn't even separated. It's a painted bicycle cutter. So yeah, I'm just gonna bike on the sidewalk here and be careful to yield to pedestrians. It's not that hard. I'm back home. That's the legislature. You can see Louis Riel's silhouette. Nuit Blanche was cool, wasn't it? I see it as a night when pedestrians take over the exchange. The cars are so glaringly out of place there, such a vibe killer. Our city could definitely be this cool more than once a year. This is a preview of what a more walkable city would be like. Thanks to all the Nuit Blanche artists.